Mr. Buck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Director Ray, for your service to our country. And, and I, I want to personally thank you for uh, the great work of the FBI and the uh, case that you mentioned earlier, the synagogue in, in Colorado. Uh, Director Ray, I, I think it's uh, important um, uh, that, that the world knows that, that uh, the people on this committee, certainly I, condemn white nationalism, white supremacy, uh, Nazis, um, and I don't think anybody uh, accepts the fact many of our relatives uh, my father uh, fought in World War II to, to rid this planet from the scourge of, of Nazi uh, Germany and, and Nazis generally, and it's upsetting to see any uh, form of Nazi uh, uh, philosophy uh, come back uh, in this country or anywhere else. But there is, uh, in the chairman's uh, opening statement and in some other comments, uh, there seems to be this uh, uh, link between um, white nationalists, white supremacists, Nazis, and hate crimes, as if only uh, white supremacists commit hate crimes. Um, I have seen a number of videos uh, online recently, and uh, uh, it, it appears to me that hate crimes uh, are much broader uh, than that, and I want to get into some other questions, but, but if you could just let me know, is it is it true that the only hate crimes committed in this country are committed by white nationalists? Uh, no, certainly we've seen hate crimes committed by a variety of individuals. Okay, and uh, one of the concerns I have, and, and I agree with um, my friend Mr. Johnson from Louisiana's comments about the uh, uh, perception among in the public about the even-handedness of uh, law enforcement. I was in law enforcement for 25 years. I, I feel very strongly about the public perception of law enforcement. And I think that one of the challenges that we face, uh, we have two very high profile, uh, one a one day riot and, and one a series of riots last summer. And it appears to the public that those uh, uh, activities have been treated differently by the FBI and by, by law enforcement. Oftentimes, I think uh, the, the riots involving Antifa and other groups over the summer in Portland and cities across the United States uh, were handled by local law enforcement um, and not necessarily by the FBI. But because there appears to be a concerted and coordinated effort, um, it seems to me that the FBI would have a role in, uh, in, in investigating those activities. And I just wanna give you the opportunity to talk about uh, the, um, the fact that you have 500, uh, as you mentioned today, prosecutions of the January 6th events at the United States Capitol, and yet we don't see the uh, leadership uh, of Antifa or the money behind. There are news reports, for example, that um, uh, the day after uh, Kenosha, there were rioters there from Portland, from other cities that had converged uh, at, at that location. It appears that those are coordinated efforts and, and it involves, um, I don't know how you'd put it any, way, any other way, but, but organized crime. Could you please comment and, and tell the American people uh, how seriously the FBI takes uh, those types of, of domestic terror act activities and, and the fact that there really is no distinction or, or there is a distinction between uh, uh, the FBI's efforts in, in one area and the other. So uh, first to be clear, the FBI has one standard for both, right, which is based on the law, based on the evidence available, uh, based on our effort to protect the American people and uphold the Constitution. I can certainly understand, though, I can certainly understand why people might formulate an impression, and part of that has to do with the fact that in a lot of the uh, hundreds, hundreds of investigations we've been conducting related to activity over the course of the summer, uh, in some cases the most readily provable offense is a state or local charge rather than the availability of a, of a ready-made federal charge. And to some extent what you're seeing related to January 6th is that because a lot of the activity that was engaged in uh, fairly straightforwardly implicates federal crimes, namely breaching federal property, going inside the Capitol, interfering with Congress, et cetera. It's, um, it's easier to bring federal charges in that attack than it was over the summer. So a lot of those state and local prosecutions that you're referring to from over the summer 
have had our joint terrorism task force. I don't mean to interrupt you. Working closely with Ray, our state Ray, I've local I've got five partners. seconds yeah. left, but I just want to mention uh, there were attacks on federal facilities and cities across the United States. Yes, and and so that's the other piece of it, right? We have lots of investigations, lots of federal investigations. Well, like I mentioned, I think in my opening remarks, I think. Essentially, all of our 56 field offices have been investigating activity there, and we are looking for things that are, of course, harder to drill into, but we're looking for things like funding, like logistics, like coordination. Um, and so the, a lot of this gets down to questions of how readily available is the evidence, how clear is the federal jurisdiction. But when we have charges that we can bring federally, we're all in. We're all in. I mean, you know, some of these are offenses over the summer where people have brought, you know, thrown Molotov cocktails. Uh, in some cases, we were able to bring federal charges related to that. Uh, in some cases, there's an assault on a federal officer, and we're able to bring assault on federal officer charges. So we're looking for those types of offenses, but we're also looking at the kind of the more systematic type of issue. Again, funding, logistics, coordination, all that stuff. Um, and a lot of this boils down to the less glamorous you, a spade work that you would recognize from the investigative activity. You, sometimes you, the evidence is readily available, sometimes it's harder to get at. But we're, yeah, we're absolutely, yeah. we have one standard. I don't care whether you're upset at our criminal justice system or upset at our election system. Violence, assault on federal law enforcement, destruction uh, of property is not the way to do it. That's our position. The, gen standard. the gentleman's time has expired. Christopher Ray was uh, fr flat out lying right there. And the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think, I'm you know, a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is. Because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, and I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases, and this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like unlike I've ever seen in a case, uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. There is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. He made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically, as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, 
they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who... Um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other Capitol she's ever been in is a state Capitol that's open 24-7. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between, you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they want to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is. It's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.